Welcome back to GB Guns. Thanks for joining us. Some of you may recall that uh, last winter, Maddie AR and I got to go visit POF USA, Patriot Ordnance Factory, and that's where we got to see what all makes these guys different, aside from stuff like their roller cam pin and improved bolt carrier, etc., etc. Because quite honestly, we had been like probably many of you are, just kind of wondering what makes their premium stuff so premium. We got to see that it's all made there in house, actually witness things being made, got to see their barrel machine doing the rifling, got to see CNC machines cutting stuff out, and uh, got to shoot some of their guns. And I came to realize that there's a lot more different to them than uh, just stuff being a little prettier and uh, all being made in house. Of course, this bolt carrier has all kinds of improvements to it. We've got videos covering that. I wanted to show you what's different about their uppers. And that's what's coming up next on GB Guns. So the best way, of course, to show you what all goes into the upper is to build one. Now, thanks to YouTube, I can't assemble this on camera, but I can show you what's different. This upper receiver and this port door, neither of which are Patriot Ordnance Factory, but this is the receiver that I'm going to be using. Their charging handle, however, is from Patriot Ordnance Factory. This is their Strike Eagle. Ambi charging handles are kind of common. What I like about this design is that these edges are rounded, so they're a little less snag prone. I would also like that it is true Ambi. You see this side is activating across. It's not simply letting you pull, but uh, it's slightly oversized without being huge. You've got serrations for traction on the front side and things are pretty much rounded off. It's also got a nice grip spot here so you can grab the thumb if you want to. Ambi charging handles are all over the place. That's not the main attraction. What is though is the rest of what goes into assembling this upper. One of those things is the barrel nut. This barrel nut, as you can see, is a giant piece of aluminum that serves as a absurdly large heat sink. Huge. In fact, I want to say it's something like a total of 30 or so square inches exposed between all the little fins, etc. And you can see it's smooth inside, third outside. This doesn't turn, but those ribs there do help add to heat sink like function. And when that's threaded on, locking the barrel down, you know, right here on the chamber is where all your heat is happening. That's where the worst part of it is. And so by absorbing and sh sh shedding off a lot of that heat, you're uh, helping to keep the rest of the barrel a little bit cooler. And uh, I saw a pretty cool gun that uh, had been sent back to POF after it had been in a house fire. And of course, everything was all melted down and terrible looking, except for right around here. And that's because this is the heat sink. This is what was shedding off most of the heat. Their handguard that goes with this barrel nut is nice and lightweight. It is a bit a little larger in diameter than what uh, has become in vogue, but for hands like mine, it provides ample gripping spot. Of course, we do have M-lock all along here. And you see that it's got a simple clamping system to hold on, but it's got these nice anti-rotation tabs to show you how that works. Slide this in here and it is a snug snug fit which of course is a positive that means that we're going to be shedding what heat doesn't get to air off of these fins is going straight to the handguard to dissipate through the aluminum handguard. Anti-rotation tabs there see it can't really go very far but it can lock in and then you're clamping and the rear QD points that mount on here, those screws fit down and settle in between the fins on the heatsink, which also helps lock everything in place. So that keeps your barrel nut from rotating, keeps your handguard from rotating, holds everything in place nice and tight. We have no distractions along the bottom here, aside from rail space on the very end, which is where if you're gonna put a bipod, you're probably gonna be putting it there. Give you an idea of how thin and lightweight this is. 
If you wanted to add anything else, of course, the M-Lock allows you to do that. And we have a window here for their Dictator gas block, which I'll be covering here shortly. But uh, pretty smart, lightweight design that still, I mean, the, the receiver is heavier than the front of the gun, of course, without a, a barrel in here. But uh, smart, sharp looking, and you can see that our height from receiver to handguard has remained flush. I'm gonna pull this off and show you some other. Next, of course, is how the barrel fits. Now, I've got a barrel here. I'll leave the brand out, but uh, made to mill spec. You know, your standard run of the mill barrel with the uh, M4 feed ramps set up and the extension installed, etc., etc. And uh, this is a bootleg ink, which is a sister company of primary weapon systems upper receiver, so you know that everything that needs to be in spec is in spec there. And watch what happens. See, I slide that in, and if I can make noise with it, I will. There's just a little bit of play up and down. And guess what? That's going to be there pretty much no matter what. Your barrel nut is going to tighten the surface of the barrel extension to the receiver, but only that pressure is going to be what holds that perfectly in place. So your accuracy potential with this barrel is limited, no fault of either manufacturer. It's basically mill spec. This barrel is made by Patriot Ordnance Factory, and you can tell because it's got their born on date coating on the side there. It's got a very nice deep finish to it. It's one of the direct impingement barrels and uh, their E squared chamber. The E squared chamber, I wish I could show you on camera. It's not gonna come out pretty much no matter what I do uh, because it's tiny. But inside the chamber there, there are slits that run along the side of the casing. I grab a 5.56 casing real quick. So to keep everything fair, I'm gonna use some common PMC. This is a X-Tac 5.56. And inside the chamber, which wraps up around here, there are two little tiny slits that come along the side here inside of this barrel. And what that does is as the, after the bullet has left the casing and those gas pressures are building, a little bit of the gas comes back and will push alongside the casing to aid in extraction. It's basically ejecting the brass. Uh, that increases reliability and uh, puts a little bit less strain on the entire system. It's very similar to the fluting. If you think about uh, like in a G3 or MP5 with the fluted chambers, it's just two tiny little cuts along the side there to allow gas to push on the casing and get the shell out of there quicker. If that has any impact on the casing or whatnot, you'll have to wait till we shoot it. Back to that fitment that I was talking about before I got distracted by the E squared. See how tight that is? You have to basically carefully line this up and drive it in. I did it uh, as a dry fit and it took two people to get it apart so I'm not going to shove it all the way in there. But that barrel is going to sit tightly in this receiver and that's going to help keep everything consistent and increase accuracy in theory, at least as far as I know. Looking at the end here. You can see it's, it doesn't have a target crown, but does have a nice clean spot. And we even have a little bit of a flatter end here on the threads, which is interesting. Gas coming out of this is going to be dictated by their dictator gas block. A couple things about this gas block are different. You notice it comes with the, raw, the gas tube pre-installed and that the gas tube is straight. So by doing that, by not having the traditional bend or curve in there, it's reducing a high pressure and heat spot that cause, that builds up on that bend. Also a little spot for stuff to collect. Now the gas tube is supposed to fail first on the AR platform, but uh, it doesn't always have to. I haven't had one fail on me, but this is just another example of Patriot Ordnance Factor, Factory going above and beyond in their engineering and uh, taking things as far as they can go. The end here 
we have a little screw screwdriver turnable adjustable gas block. This has nine positions uh, with 40 degree indexing, which can be reached through the window on our handguard once that's all in place. And that'll let us increase or decrease gas as we want to. My intent with this build is to cut gas back as far as I can and still have it cycle reliably and make the softest shooting rifle possible. That combined with this barrel, which I've seen them rifle in-house, uh, I'm expecting to have a really pleasant shooter. This profile, you notice, is a little different. It's got a little more weight to it than a GI all throughout without any huge heavy spots. I also notice that it is pre-dimpled for attaching the gas block on there, which is pretty cool. And uh, our twist rate is a one and eight, which is good. I found one seven, one eight, one nine, all to perform about the same depending on the bullet weights you like to use. I like to go with the heavier stuff just because I tend to get better groups out of it. But uh, these pieces are going to be what goes together on this upper receiver that I teased for you guys on Facebook and uh, Instagram a while back. I'm not taking this out of the package until I'm absolutely ready to install because I don't want to risk the gas tube getting uh, bent or anything getting clogged in or whatnot because, well, there's a lot of stuff in here. So, in this room, not in the package, obviously. Looking forward to getting this together. Probably gonna run the Patriot Ordnance Factory bolt carrier in it, uh, or might try some generic GI. What I don't have figured out yet is my muzzle device. Love to hear input from you guys on that. Also, if uh, you've had any experience with Patriot Ordnance Factory or have any questions about this, I realize this is a real quick overview. There's a lot that goes into these. Those will be outlined in my article, but just not for YouTube because too much words makes for a boring video. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the range.